everybody. I just want to welcome you to Reef Talk with this video intro to a very important message. Um, if you're watching this as someone who's never had saltwater aquariums before, welcome. And please watch this video through to the end because it's going to teach you a lot the basics about saltwater aquarium care, mainly revolving around uh, the Dory, Finding Dory movie, and the Blue Tang, Regal Tang is what they're known as. Um, I just want to read you this little blurb before we start the video. Um, keeping marine aquariums or saltwater aquariums is not the sort of thing you can just pick up and do. It takes a lot of work and know-how. If you want to try to keep a fish, you should really start with freshwater fish. It's a lot cheaper. It's a lot easier. There's a lot less maintenance. Secondly, there's a chance that your blue tang was illegally collected from the wild and there's no point in supporting that industry and killing of fish in the process. And unfortunately, you learn every new hobby by making mistakes. And fish, you know, they die. And, and that's how you learn is by accidentally killing them. Please watch this video all the way through. Don't buy one just because your kids are asking for one. There's a lot involved in aquarium saltwater keeping. Enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to Reef Talk. I'm Scott Anderson and I'm here with Steve Rotter of Rotter Tube Reef. And today we kind of want to talk about should you keep a blue tang? And with the movie Finding Dory coming out, I think a lot of people are really going to start thinking about purchasing one of these fish. And they're absolutely a fish that you can keep in your tank. But there's some caveats here. This is not an easy saltwater fish to keep. This should not be your first saltwater fish. So, Steve, I think you have a really good story as to keeping blue tangs and how difficult they can be even for an experienced fish keeper. Can you kind of tell us what happened to you? Uh, <clears throat> which story? Well, how you've had a well, how you've bought them and they've not done so well. Oh yeah, you know um, these uh, blue tangs are gorgeous, as Scott said, but they're really hard to keep, and they're known as ick magnets. Um, those of you guys who don't know what ick is, it's a parasite that you know it's it's bad in your aquarium. Um, the reason why they're known as ick parasites is because they've got a very thin slime coat layer on their body. In fact, it's almost non-existent. Um, my last one that I had would let me uh, pet her, if you will. Blue tangs are notorious for hiding and playing dead when they get scared. And um, she would just lay on the sand, not move at all. And I could touch her, and I felt that she felt like uh, rubber, for, like off of a tire. It wasn't slimy at all. So... The lack of slime coat <clears throat> allows these parasites to get on them. Again, the name Ick Magnet. Now, I had an issue with one of mine, totally healthy. After about a few months, she just stopped eating. I don't know why. She was swimming fine, really playful, uh, just did not eat. And I, I just don't know why. Um, she died about a week later. I tried everything I could to feed her. She died a week later. Um, um, just the biggest thing with them, you know, Pixar did a great job at Finding Nemo of depicting all the fish and their personalities. Dory was very skittish, very, very nervous, always freaking out. That's what these fish do. Um, so if you've got little kids running around, as most of them are going to want this fish now because of Finding Dory, we'll get into that. Um, they say, you know, you go to the aquariums, don't tap on the glass. Um, when my guys, they're four years old and eight years old, I don't let them run around near the aquarium because it freaks the fish out. You want to maintain a peaceful environment. The dory fish, the blue tangs, freak out easily. It's a really difficult fish to keep, as Scott had said, um, mainly because they're, I don't know how do you put it, like very fragile, very timid, very shy, very scared, well, very nervous. They're, there's a few things to them. First, they're very prone to ick and marine velvet. Unlike um, most fish, tangs are a skinned fish. So they have skin instead of scales. So they 
don't have that natural defense. And they do have a slime coat, but that's all they have for a defense. So basically it's a thin slime coat right to skin, where most fish will have a thin slime coat. And then instead of skin, they kind of got those thick scales, which do a lot better job protecting them against parasites. But of course, tangs don't have that. So step one, you've already got a hard thing to deal with because you, at this point you need a quarantine tank, you need to treat these things properly, otherwise you can easily kill one with the parasite issues. Right, and with the, the quarantine tank, um, the one before that one passed away that I tried to keep in quarantine, I didn't put copper in the tank. Um, a quarantine tank is a separate tank that we've talked about hundreds of times. Um, you want to keep the fish in a quarantine hospital tank before putting it in your main tank. One of the big reasons is so they have a chance to calm down and chill out because these guys have been taken from the ocean from their families, um, shipped to a wholesaler across the world, shipped to maybe in the distributor, shipped to your store. A lot of the times they have not eaten and they're being shipped all over the place and they're freaking out. And then all of a sudden they're thrown into your aquarium. It's a lot of stress and people don't realize that. They just walk into a store and they say, oh, I want to get the dory fish. They don't realize that fish has been ripped out of its home like three or four days ago. Incredible amounts of stress has not been eating. So I put my second to the last one in the quarantine tank. She wasn't eating. And then she just wound up laying on her side. And I thought, let me just leave her alone. And she wound up passing away. I did everything I could, but she just wasn't eating. So that fish was, it didn't have ick or marine velvet. She was just incredibly, incredibly stressed out, I believe. Um, tried to swim, was playful. She was in there by herself, but she was not eating. The last one I had was doing great for three or four months, then stopped eating. So it's, it's just, it's a hard fish to keep. Going back a few steps, though, um, Scott and I were talking about this uh, the other day, um, and he can touch on this too, regardless of what fish you get. You really shouldn't jump into anything unless you've done some research, be it a dog, be it a parrot, a fish, a hamster, whatever, especially when you've got little kids after the Disney movie. I want to get a, I want to get a Nemo fish. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Shut up. Fine. We'll get the fish. Bad idea. Because you don't know what you're doing if you've never had a saltwater aquarium. They require a lot of patience, a lot of time, and a lot of money. And then to make matters worse, you're going to get a blue tang, a regal tang, a dory fish. That's what they're called. Um, you should do your research. Start with a regular size tank, maybe a 28-gallon. You know, Scott can talk about he's got all the different sizes. What would be the best for you? We're going to touch on that as a newbie in the hobby. Um, best bet would be to get a clownfish. They're very hardy, as we talked about, but you still need to do your research Blue tangs are hard to keep, even for the advanced saltwater reef keeper, okay? Um, not impossible. Scott has a beautiful one, and he's had great success with it. And how old is he now? I've had it for four years. See? So you could totally do it. Um, I just got a couple bad ones that were sick. They looked great in the store, but I got them home, and not so much. So it could be done, but you've got all those odds against you especially if you don't know what you're doing. It's kind of like, hey, I've never driven a car. I want that Porsche. You buy the Porsche. You don't know how to drive. You're grinding the gears, the clutch. You're screwing up your transmission, and maybe you get into an accident. You know? That's kind of what we're getting. That's, don't listen to your kids. Get them like a plush Dory toy or something, you know? Don't do it. Well, you can absolutely get a blue tang, and if you want a blue tang... That's completely doable, but you need to kind of know what you're getting yourself into to begin with. I mean, first thing is, like a dog, this fish could live 15 to 20 years if you take care of it well. So this is a long-term purchase if you're deciding to get a blue tang. They really do live a long time. Secondly, once you start talking about blue tangs and tangs in general, you're start starting to talk about bigger tanks you're talking about more expensive setups yeah so 
I wouldn't even think about a blue tang in anything smaller than a 75 gallon and i really honestly think a 75 gallon is pushing it yeah the bigger four foot tanks like a 90 or a 120 are okay but remember this fish is going to get up to a foot long when it's full grown so at that point you're really needing a six foot tank wow so you're talking about a full blown big saltwater setup to effectively keep a blue tank. You'll see many people out there keeping them in smaller setups and you can do that for a while but if you want to keep one of these long term you kind of need to know what you're getting into. Now I kept mine in a 90 gallon for a couple of years. He did great in the 90 gallon but I mean mine's only half grown and it's probably six inches or so right now. Wow. So, So it's it's going to get a lot bigger. And the thing about tangs is they spend the whole day swimming back and forth. So long tanks are really important for tangs because they need that swimming room because they're going to go just left to right kind of all day long swimming back and forth in your tank. They're a pelagic fish. They swim around. Yep. That's that's a great point, and that's exactly why – I got my 125 gallon tank. I went to the 75 gallon. I was starting to see that it was time to upgrade sooner than later. I needed more length. I got the 125 gallon from the 75 because it's six feet long. And just like Scott said, they swim back and forth. Also, what's important for every aquarium is water flow, especially for these guys. They like to swim against the current. And I see I've got a tang tank. I got a bunch of tangs and my 125 gallon. And throughout the day, you'll see them like a few inches away from the power head. And when I see that, I always turn it up to full blast because they love swimming against that current. It's fun for them. It's exercise. And that's just what they do. So with that said, when you go to an LRS, a local reef store, that's what I call it because I hate the term local fish store. It sounds stupid to me. That's LFS, but LRS, whatever. Um, I've been to a couple of them when I started out in the hobby, and I'm sure Scott can... uh, uh, attest to this too. The people at the store, they may be good, but most of them either don't know what they're talking about or they just want to sell you stuff. And when I had a 28 gallon cube, it was like what, a foot and a half wide? I said, hey, can I get the, I would like to get a blue tank. Can I do that? What size aquarium do you have? And I thought, oh, they're asking me, so they must know what they're talking about. They're, they're not going to sell me a fish that doesn't fit. I said, uh, 28 gallon nano cube. Oh, yeah, that's fine. No problem. What other fish do you have in it? A yellow tang, which you shouldn't put in a 28-gallon anyway. (laughs) So I did that, and then they said, yes, you can add a blue tang as well. Totally wrong because of what Scott just said. So not only did I have one fish that shouldn't belong, I had two fish, and they allowed it. And if you're new at this hobby, you've got a screaming four-year-old that wants Dory, and he's like, yes, you can have both these fish, and you buy them. And then you don't know to upgrade. Now, a lot of people will think like what my wife thinks. Well, the tank's big enough because they can both fit in it. But that's not the whole thing. Like what Scott said, they like to swim. You need that swimming space. So just another thing to keep in mind, just because they fit in the tank doesn't mean they should be in that tank. Yeah, and I don't know if I've told this story, but my I've had two blue tanks in my life. The first one I bought, I bought 10 years ago when I first set up my 29-gallon tank. I went into the pet store, and they were – they had just gotten a ton of little, like, one-inch blue tangs in. Um, They were selling them stupid cheap. I think they were, like, 20 bucks a piece, right? Yeah, 20 bucks a piece for these little tiny blue tangs. Now, let me me just ask you a question because – some people may not know. He's talking about the little, little guys. Um, what's the difference between those little, little guys and the regular size? It's just that they're smaller, right? That's the only yeah, thing. They're, just, they're just baby fish. So now, do you recommend getting those because they are so small? Do they have less of a chance at survival because they're so tiny, like that big? I mean, it, I, w- I don't know if I would want to put a little tang like that with a show hole and a clown tang hoping that it's going to do well but you should be successful buying a small tang like that i mean if uh, if assuming it's going into an environment that it's going to be okay right i mean i wouldn't drop it into a tank with some big aggressive fish 
Right. But if, if you're putting it in the right environment, it should be perfectly fine. And there's actually a lot of um, evidence to say that starting off small is good because the Tang gets used to the captive environment at a much younger age. And as it grows, it doesn't really know that it's in a small tank, right? Because a big fish came out of the ocean. A little tiny fish came out of the ocean, but it goes into a, what at the time is a big tank, and then it grows up, and it just kind of doesn't know the difference. That's a good point, yeah. It, it's what it is. So there's a lot to be said for that. But anyways, I bought that little tiny $20 blue tank, put it in my 29-gallon tank. Now, the guy at the store did tell me that it was going to grow too big, so I totally think they did the right thing there. And he said, when it gets too big, if it's healthy, bring it back, and we'll trade it in, and you can get something else. Cool. But I still don't necessarily recommend that, because um, I didn't know what I was doing. So this $20 blue tang came home with me, got white spots on it. I didn't know what it was, how to treat it. I don't know. A few weeks later, it died. I had no idea what I was doing. And that's probably exactly what a lot of people are going to run into, right? Your brand, I mean, if, this is why I recommend research. I hope people watch this show and kind of learn about these fish because um, I didn't know what to do. Well, it's got little white spots on it. Is that a problem? Right. I don't know. Actually, that is a big problem, right? I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's like, is it a, you don't know. I mean, is not to sound funny, but. Is it a sign of fish puberty? Is it a sign of them changing? Is it a disease? What is it? Is it pregnant? What? You, how do you know? Um, exactly. I just wanted to throw in another, uh, just take a few steps back um, to research. You got it. You know what? A really sad thing. When I was maybe, I don't know, 16. I worked in a pet store, and they sold fish, um, you know, dogs, cats. And it was really sad because it always got the busiest. And it was a nice store, but it always got the busiest around the holidays, like Christmas. And it was really busy, and you'd see these families come in, looking at the puppies, you know. And I didn't like the way that's, this store handled things. They're like, as soon as you see someone look at a puppy... You take that puppy, and you give him a quick spritz of the puppy cologne. It smelled really good. And you take him up. You don't even ask him questions. Just, oh, I saw you looking at him here. You want to hold him? And you don't, you don't even wait for them to say yes or no. You just give it to them so they fall in love with it, and then they oh, buy this geez. six or $700 dog. I never did that, and I think I got in trouble once or twice for doing it because um, they just wanted you to thrust this animal into them so they buy it. Well, it's a known fact that – a month or two after the holidays, January, February, a lot of these animals wind up in the pound, which is really sad because people don't know what they're doing. Why is this dog not potty trained? I'm so sick of this dog peeing all over my house. Blah, 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 blah. I don't have time to take care of it. And then what turns into, oh, it's Christmas. It's a great time. Let's get an animal. He's so cute. They don't know what they're doing, and the poor animal suffers. Now, in our hobby, unfortunately, fish do pass away because either we don't know what we're doing and the fish pay the price, which is bad. Um, you don't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs, right? Jack Nicholson, thank you. Um, but that's sad, but please just do your research. I just wanted to throw that story in there about the puppies. Same go for the fish. Yeah, and I, I don't want us to sound like we're down on this because right. um, reef keeping is a great hobby. I love it. It's one of those passions that I have that drives me. So if that's something that you're interested in doing, then it is fantastic. If it's something that, you know, it looks pretty, maybe, yeah, d just skip it. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you want to do this and you want to be successful at it, it really has to be something that drives you. Right. It, it can't be just this, I'm going to throw some water in there once in a while kind of deals. You really need to be into it. Right. And especially if you want to keep the more advanced fish, which right. is what I would consider a blue tang. Um, Live Aquaria used to list these guys as easy. They are not an easy fish. I'm glad to see that they've 
fix that listing. They're showing them as a moderate fish now, which I think is probably a very reasonable listing for these fish. They're not incredibly difficult to the point where almost nobody can keep them. Anybody who's relatively good as a fish keeper should be able to keep a blue tag. It should be completely doable. Yeah, and that's exactly right. We're not downplaying it. We're just kind of we're warning you guys, and I hope um, a lot of you guys who are watching this, if you have YouTube channels, make a video stressing the importance of knowing what you're doing. Do research on everything, especially these little guys. Now, while Scott was talking, I, I wanted to read something that I found the other day. Um, just a quick little blurb on blue tangs. It's called "Please Let's Not Find a Dory." Now, a lot of people throughout the world have petitioned uh, against Disney and Pixar to please put just a little disclaimer in the beginning of the movie somewhere, and you know something like verbiage like "Don't buy this fish unless you know what you're doing." You know something like that. They refuse to do it, which kind of pisses me off. But let me just read this blurb. It's pretty interesting. Um, it says, it's an all-too-familiar practice. Families go to see movies that feature fun, friendly animals. Big screen. They write, before long, a member of the family becomes too much trouble, like we said with the puppies or any other thing like that that you don't know what you're getting into. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. The cute new member of the family becomes too much trouble or isn't cared for properly. The animal dies, is abandoned, or is surrendered to overwhelmed rescue groups, just like we said. It happened when the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies came out. At one point, 90% of the pur purchased turtles were estimated to have died in the United States alone. It happened in the wake of Beverly Hills Chihuahua. The tiny dogs paid the price when they were abandoned at very high rates. It happened with Finding Nemo when children clamored for clownfish. Some children seeking to give their new pets freedom through the same route. And this is interesting. Used by Nemo in the film, flushed their fish down the toilets. Oh, God. Which I guess, you know, little yeah. kids, I can see that happening. Now, with two weeks to go until the very hyped opening of Finding Dory, the Disney Pixar sequel to Nemo, concerned, concern mounts for what may happen with the Pacific Blue Tang. The Pacific Blue Tang is a beautiful blue, yellow, and black fin found in Pacific waters. I asked behavioral ecologist Colin Brown of Macquarie University, whose work on fish cognition and welfare has been a go-to source for me. We, What we know about this fish, he wrote, this is all I'm going to read, you'll be shocked to, to discover that we actually know very little about cognition and blue tangs. Correction, make that nothing. But that is true for the vast majority of the 32 plus thousand species of fish out there. We know that their skin reflects light, uh, a deep blue, and they tend to get lighter at night. They have a very sharp spine on either side of their tail, which is erect when they're frightened. They have a huge distribution, but are under threat from illegal collection. They graze algae on coral and reefs, which is very important because it prevents the coral from being overgrown. So with these guys being taken from their homes, it also affects the coral reefs in the ocean. Um, so it's just... And he, he just goes on to say, it's exactly why scientists are so worried right now. Um, the push to breed captive blue tangs so that at the very least these fish won't be harvested in large numbers from the wild. Um, so I'll, I'll include a link to this whole thing if you want to read it in the comment, uh, the description of the video. But it's, it's, a, it's a big thing and it's just, it's, it's concerning. It's just sad. I mean, every movie that comes out, people are going to clamor and they just have to have it. I don't know what they think is going to happen. I guess it's just human nature. Like you see a door, you want to get it. I mean, you think the fish is going to talk to you. I mean, in the end, it's just going to sit in your tank and swim around and you might get bored with it and it's going to wind up dying. So anyway, I just wanted to read that to you guys. So, I mean, the article brings up a lot of good stuff. Um, a lot of the blue tangs are sustainably collected, and that's important, right? I mean, it's the same with everything. We have problems with our fisheries that we get food from because people aren't collecting them sustainably. Same thing with the blue tangs. Responsible countries like Australia and stuff like that have very 
regulated industries where the animals are collected as sustainably as possible. And you can pretty well bet that the aquarium industry is not going to be the biggest problem that those fish face in the future. Right. So um, it's not to say that it's all that keeping a blue tang is bad. I mean, I would say keeping a blue tang is no worse than keeping any other fish. Right. They're just um, more, more difficult. Yeah, they're just harder to keep. Now, with that being said, let's kind of talk about what it takes to keep a blue tang. So I would think um, step one, you're going to need a four to six foot tank, right? Um, and really, when I say a four foot tank, I'm really thinking 90 or 120 gallon. And if you're looking at that 120, go ahead and get the 125 and go from the four foot to the six foot if you have the space in your house. The longer distance is just better. Now, just to, I want to interject something with that real quick. You really need to listen to what Scott said, um, but I know a lot of people won't. They'll think, yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, it won't happen to me. I don't need to wear a seatbelt. You have to listen to what he just said because you just have to. That's just what this fish requires. Right. Go ahead. So, and then you need a good filtration. Tangs become big and they produce a lot of waste, right? So if you watch me feed my fish, you'll see that just about every time I feed my fish, the fish takes a giant dump. <laughs> so your your filtration yep. system has to be able to pull all that out. Tangs are inherently dirty fish when it comes to that. So you're going to need a big skimmer. You're going to have to have some way of keeping your water quality good. Plan on water changes or bio pellets or something to keep your water chemistry as good as possible. You need to keep those nitrates low. You need to keep the phosphates low so that that water is not polluted. So big tank, optimum water quality is important. Um, these fish, blue tanks don't tend to graze so much, but they do like having a lot of hiding places in the tank. So you need a good rock structure with available places to hide. Mm -hmm. uh, at night, they're going to kind of wedge themselves into like a little crevice, and that's where they sleep. And you'll see that they kind of go to the same place every night. So they really need this rock structure where they can wedge themselves in and have a nice place to sleep. That's really important to these fish. So, I mean, I would say if you're looking at a brand new system, you need to be thinking a minimum of $1,000 to set up a tank for a blue tank. And that's going to be cut in corners. By the time you buy a tank, buy a filtration system, and do everything you need to do, it's going to be difficult to bring this fish in for under a thousand dollars. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, so I would just put that price in your head as a keeping a blue tank costs at least a thousand dollars. You're going to see the fish from thirty to one hundred and fifty dollars, depending on the size. That is not what it costs to keep the fish. That's what it costs to buy the fish. Buying the fish is the cheap part. Yeah, right. I mean, if you guys watch my channel, My High Reefers, you've seen my setup. I've got over ten grand in that setup. Oh. So I, it sounds like a lot of money. This is my <laughs> hobby, right? It's so easy to complain about the $300 air conditioning bill and then go drop a couple hundred bucks on a fish or a coral. It's it's just the way my mind works. It's completely backwards, yeah. but it's the way it works, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it's the way it works. It's it takes a lot of time and it takes money. A lot of it. <clears throat> Those of you who are in freshwater, and not to belittle freshwater aquariums, but so much less time, so much less effort. All right. So you've heard the rumor that saltwater aquariums are more expensive. They're a lot more expensive. <laughs> oh, my God. Before I got into the hobby, I thought, I've always heard they're more expensive from somewhere. I thought, well, it'll be okay. I'll find ways to cut corners, and you can certainly do that. But, oh, my God, it's, re it's expensive. It's really expensive. Then, as with everything in life, if you want to become more advanced, you want to buy better equipment. Or like me, I tend to find out how it works and I'll build my own equipment like a bio pellet reactor, easy to do. You don't have to be that technical. You just look at things, you learn, you read, you research, 
you go to people, you watch YouTube, you figure it out. I don't build things. I figured it out. Um, but these things are expensive. We're talking not multiples of $50. It's usually multiples of $100 for the average item. Multiples of $100 yeah. for each item. And it's not hard to need three items, especially when you're starting out. I mean, look at what you need. You need... Besides the tank and the stand, you need a heater, you need a thermometer, which is cheap, a couple dollars, but then you need like um, power heads, which create the current in your tank, and if you've got a larger tank, you're going to need two or possibly three power heads to create current in that water to churn all the water. That's just that. They needed a filtration system. What kind do you get? You can get a canister filter. You can get a protein skimmer with a sump. And all the new people out there are saying, oh, my God, what the hell is he talking about? See, that's exactly what we're saying. It's a lot of research and a lot of money and investment and time. And then there's the weekly cleanings. There's the feedings. There's why are my fish dying? Why does my uh, water look cloudy? Why is there algae on the glass? Why is it green? Why is it brown? Why is it red? A lot of different things you need to research um, because you had a, a screaming five-year-old that wanted Dory so the fish dies, you know. Now, you can put it in a 28-gallon tank. Briefly. Yes, full knowing that you will be getting a larger aquarium or giving it away back to the pet store, which is a shame. Or a friend who has an aquarium, that would be the best. Then you've got someone who could come over and show you stuff. But, um, you know, that's all I really have on the topic. Uh, just be careful and you know do your research and if you made it this far into the video as a newbie congratulations that must mean that you are really interested in this fish it's a very fun hobby i watch my aquarium more than i watch tv i barely watch tv ever um, i'm too busy doing other things um but with all this talk i wanted to say that you know as a reminder you know i was telling you scott that today in fact in two hours Exotic Aquatics opens up. It's the local LRS, local reef store by me. It's the first saltwater aquarium store I went to. They're having a big sale, which is weird because they're generally, generally from what I've seen, a little higher priced, but then they get some shocker prices. Like I got my JBJ45 for really inexpensive, really inexpensive, my second aquarium, but they're having a buy one, get one free on all fish and all corals. So I'm going to get depending on the price, like bubble tip anemone. And my son, he keeps asking about a blue tang, which I know what I'm doing. So I'm kind of thinking about getting a blue tang for the 45 and maybe when it grows a little larger, pressing my luck and throwing it <laughs> in the 125 with the seven other tangs. Yeah. I'd with the, With the blue tang, I want to cover a couple more things about keeping them that I feel are really important. Yeah, you'd be perfect for that, and then so, we'll end it with that. Yeah, so feeding is incredibly important with these guys. So you're going to want to feed it a good pellet food, nori or seaweed. There's many different options there you can go with. And then um, the, a good frozen food, um, like the rods or the LRS or pea mice, something like that. But they need a well-balanced diet. So, I wanted to ask really quick, sorry to interrupt you, but on the pellet food, um, if they don't catch it as it's falling to the bottom, does your guy graze the, the bottom and get the pellets off the sand? Um, you know, with the number of fish I have in my tank and the competition, very little makes it to the bottom. Okay. I, I put just a few in real slow. It kind of goes down. Everybody, it, My goal is to make sure nothing falls to the bottom. I turn my pumps off and yeah. just drop it in slowly, let everybody kind of swarm and get what they can, and I try to get as, let as little fall to the rock work or the bottom as possible. But So for the most part, he doesn't graze. Blue tangs aren't good algae grazers, but they still need that algae in their diet. So you need to give them nori. Um, one of the things you got to worry about with all tangs is HLLE, so hole in head and lateral line disease. Um, that is thought to be nutrition. Some people think it's carbon. I don't believe it's carbon. I've been running for carbon for years, never had a problem with it. Um, 
and I really believe that it's nutrition. And the seaweed, I think, is huge for these fish because in nature they would spend a lot of the day grazing on different types of macro and microalgae. So I think that's important. The other thing is don't buy two blue tangs. It can be done, but if you're new to the hobby, tangs, um, they tend to fight when you have two tangs that look similar or are of the same genus. So you're just going to set yourself up for failure if you go out and decide you want two blue tangs. Or buy one, get one free. I should get two. <laughs> Don't do that. So get so put it with a different so put it with different tangs that it's going to do well with. A blue tang and a yellow tang are probably going to do well together. Mm. Just make sure you're real careful on what you mix a blue tang with. They can be relatively aggressive, but basically I've been able to put a blue tang with just about every other fish, uh, and it's been fine. My purple tang and my blue tang will kind of get into it a little bit, but it's not bad. So it's just one thing to remember with tangs, there's aggression issues there. That's a good point. But, I mean, for me, the blue tang is one of my favorite fish in the tank. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the yeah. things that makes the tank come alive. So I, at no, in no way are we saying don't buy one. We're just saying know what you're doing before you get one. Research it. Have the right system set up. If you know you want a blue tang going in, design your system around the blue tang. That's important. Right. And in fact, that's just a good strategy for starting a tank is know the species that you want to keep ahead of time and build your system around those fish. Exactly. Well, I think that's perfect. If you guys have any comments, please put them below. Please share this video out to you know Facebook, like it, and then you'll get your little icons to share out to Facebook, Twitter. Do that so we can spread the knowledge on this blue tank to the community. They send it to their friends and their friends and so on. Let's get this out there circulating. Um, and if you have a YouTube channel, feel free, please, to make a video on the importance of this as well. I'd like to spread the word around because I'm sure a lot of people will be surfing YouTube to get information on this blue tang since they don't have any knowledge and they yeah. just got it home from the store. Which, unfortunately, that's a whole other disaster. If they don't know what they're doing, they're going to take this fish out of the bag and just throw it in an aquarium with salt water they got from their local reef store. That's so bad because they're not going to know that the tank has to sit and cycle through. The fish will wind up dying from ammonia poisoning because it's going to pee in the water. There's no bacteria growth yet, which breaks down the ammonia for the nitrogen cycle, and the fish will die. Um, see, if you're, again, saying, what did he just say? That's another huge gotcha. That's yeah. going to be the first thing that's going to kill new fish if you don't know what you're doing. you got to cycle that tank. Do research on YouTube for that. That's all I've got. You want to finish up with anything? I would just say research, research, research. If you want one of these fish, design your system around it, research what you're doing, and you can absolutely be successful with it, but know that it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of money to keep this fish successfully. Exactly. So until next time, we'll see you on uh, Reef Talk if you want to be on the show. Send Scott an instant message at Mile High Reefers on YouTube or me, Rod or Tube Reef, instant message, or email us at reeftalkshow at gmail.com. All right? Thanks for watching, you guys. Don't forget to share it out so people get knowledge on this fish and other fish, too. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.